Hello everyone. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the CH absorption bands and the vending vibrations that we are going to see in infrared uh, spectrum. CH uh, stretching vibrations uh, we had discussed previously when we initially talked about the stretching vibrations of various bonds and uh, this particular CH stretching vibration and we there we discussed that how with hybridization it shows the variation in the value of the uh, frequency. So that part we discussed now the important thing that we are going to see in this video is like how this variation help us in understanding the structural aspect of the compound. So that we could understand quickly from this particular uh, spectrum here. So here we have three different spectrum, uh, one corresponding to alkane, one corresponding to alkene, another corresponding to alkyne. So if you see alkane, it has only sp3 hybridization. So when your compound is containing only sp3 hybridized carbon, all the CH stretching are going to come beyond that is on the right side of the uh, 3000 uh, centimeter inverse. However, in alkene, uh, this particular compound is one deci, so it has both sp3 hybridized CH bonds as well as sp2 hybridized CH bonds. So therefore, you, if this red line is your uh, 3000 centimeter inverse, so you see CH stretch vibrations you can find both on the right side as well as here the, on the left side the small vibration is corresponding to the CH stretching due to the sp2 hybridized uh, CH bond. Okay. Now when it comes to alkyne uh, in this case it is one hexane you see here uh, it contains uh, a triply bonded CH bond as well as um, CH which is sp3 hybridized. So therefore uh, you see CH vibrations uh, stretching vibration on both side of the uh, 3000 centimeter inverse on the uh, infrared spectrum. So by looking at this region of 3000 centimeter inverse uh, the, and uh, looking at the nature of the CH stretching vibrations you can easily decide whether your compound is a purely um, alkane or it contains alkene or alkyne or both. Okay. So that is the importance of this particular CH stretching vibration. Now uh, if you see here another importance of CH stretching vibration is uh, when it comes to uh, the stretching vibrations of the aldehyde. So this aldehydic proton okay, you see stretching vibrations happening at 20, 2820 and 2720. Probably this you will understand pretty clearly when we are looking at the spectrum. So here we see two different spectrum. The above one is uh, one, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is pental okay, uh, and this is a ketone. So this is an aldehyde, this is a ketone. So this is uh, two uh, pentanone, okay. This is two pentanone and this is uh, your penta, one uh, penta. Okay, now if you look at this uh, spectrum, both of them contain the CO stretching, which we know because both of them contain the uh, doubly bonded uh, carbonyl group. So they will show the peak around 1700, okay. But how to distinguish whether uh, this is um, coming from aldehyde or is it coming from ketone. So there the importance of this aldehydic proton comes into picture. So whenever you, uh, your compound is aldehyde, apart from the CO stretching, you will find these two peaks, one at 27 and one at 20, around 27 and one at around 28. Okay one at around 28 and one other around 27. You see these two peaks here, the advantage of these two peaks is you can clearly visualize these two peaks and therefore identify the presence of aldehyde very clearly. 
because in this region of uh, this 28 20 as well as 27 uh, 20 you do not see any other peaks corresponding to any other functional group so this particular peak is very characteristic to distinguish uh, to find out the aldehyde present in the group moving on further once you identify that your uh, compound contain sp2 hybridization then the doubt is whether it is pure alkene or it is a benzene ring so if it is a benzene ring you will see two absorptions one of corresponding to c double bond c stretching okay and uh, one of it will appear at 1600 centimeter another at 1500 centimeter inverse however if it is simply an alkene you will see only peak at 1600 centimeter inverse let's look at this spectrum this is the spectrum for hexene and this is the spectrum for ethyl benzene okay so uh, it's pure alkene and you if you look at the 3000 region you see on the right side as well as on the left side corresponding to ch vibration so that means it contains both the sp2 and sp3 hybridized uh, carbon atoms now at the 1600 you see a uh, one single peak corresponding to uh, C double bond C stretch. However, when it is a benzene ring, when it is a benzene ring, you can see in the 3000 region, you see both sides uh, we have peaks. So that clearly says that it contains both sp3 and sp2 hybridized carbon atom. Now, let's look at the C double bond C stretching. Here, if you look clearly, you see one peak, uh, one sharp peak at uh, 1600, another sharp, sharp peak at around 14. Uh, 100 centimeter inverse peak. So, whenever you see this two sh sharp peak at 1600 and 1500, uh, you can clearly uh, decide that the sp2 hybridization that is uh, the CH stretching you see here is because of the presence of benzene ring and not because of just simple alkene. Now, if we look further uh let's look at the uh, the second topic was bending vibration so bending vibrations are also very important when it comes to infrared spectroscopy so uh here ch bending vibration is what we are trying to understand so if you have methyl group present in your compound then you will see uh vibrations on both side of the uh, 1400 centimeter inverse However, if methyl group isn't present in, uh, present in your compound, then you only see peaks on the left side of the 1400. Apart from that, uh, if your compound contain um, a continuous chain of CH2 groups, if it's an acyclic compound and you have a continuous chain of CH2 group, you will see uh, a peak uh, at uh, 17, uh, 20 uh, centimeter inverse which correspond, in, correspond to in-phase rocking of the methylene groups. So here it's benzene, okay, it contains a methyl group. So therefore, you can see here peaks corresponding to CH bending appearing at, uh, at this side, that is the left side of 1400 as well as on the right side of 1400. So when it, your compound contains methyl group, you will see these two peaks corresponding to ch bending however in this case hexene hexene case you see only one peak that is on the left side of the 1400 because it doesn't contain any methyl group this is another spectrum uh, where you see, uh, see uh, amino group present so you see something like this it's not as broad as the oh group that we can understand because uh, it has lesser hydrogen bonding compared to alcohol group so it is not that broadened and whenever you have NH2 group present you will see some doublet like this okay so this clearly shows that you have NH2 group present apart from that you see a bending vibration here and this bending vibration is coming around 1600 just now we saw that C double bond C also comes around 1600 but we can easily distinguish between C double bond C stretching as well as NH bending because NH bending would be more broader being more polar and uh, here another important thing to notice whenever you have a geminal methyl group present you will see at 
around 1400 you will see a splitting pattern this corresponding to again the ch bending but it is typically a split uh, peak like this so you can easily identify if you have a split bending peak of ch present then you can quickly identify you have something like a isopropyl group present in your uh, mixture now just now i talked about uh, this particular thing when you have a continuous chain of ch2 group okay you will see a peak at around 1720 to uh, see that peak let us go back here this is uh, dodecane so you have a continuous chain of ch2 uh, with more than four ch2 groups in a chain so therefore you see a peak at 721 uh, centimeter inverse this correspond to your in phase rocking motion okay uh, and uh, here this again is one deci here again you will see a continuous chain of ch2 so here again you see a peak at around 17 20 which we just now uh, discussed okay so this is also very characteristic to find the structural aspect that we have a continuous chain of ch2 group so if we have such group we will see this in phase rocking uh, peak appearing at 17 20 centimeter inverse. Now, infrared inactive vibrations. So, the, uh, we know that for a molecule to act as infrared active, it should show some degree of dipole moment. Okay, so if we look at this molecule, this is an alkene, uh, you see that uh, here we have a uh, carbon atom here we have a hydrogen atom so definitely a slight electronegativity difference is there because hydrogen and carbon they have electronegativity difference between them so there is a dipole moment present in this molecule while the stretching vibrations happen and therefore this asymmetrical alkene okay e and that is one beauty is uh, infrared active okay because it has a dipole moment however if you look at this particular alkene, which is 2,3-dimethyl-2-butene, it is a symmetrical bond. So, whenever this bond is undergoing a stretching, okay, stretching vibration, what is happening? It is not showing any dipole moment. So, therefore, this molecule, this symmetrical double bond would be infrared inactive. Similarly, this molecule is also quite... Uh, symmetrical but since it has one group which is little bit longer so it give rise to a slight uh, dipole moment but not that significant so therefore uh, this molecule will show uh, some activity but the peaks would be uh, really negligible in size okay so uh, an important criteria to decide whether a molecule is infrared active or not, you have to check whether that molecule has any dipole moment or not while stretching vibrations happen. If it doesn't, then it is infrared inactive. Okay. So, uh, please uh, try this particular problem yourself and I will ask you which of these molecules uh, in your opinion should be infrared active and which of them are infrared inactive so i hope you understood whatever is discussed in the video uh, any clarifications you can continue to ask me uh, during the live session uh, or by any other means so thank you very much for your attention have a nice day